Nothing is CGI in the film, not anything. The movie, it's like a great homage to the golden era Hollywood movies in every possible sense of the world. And, and, and including that is um, the, the greatness of the movie, you know, not only in, in story, but in the set, in the costumes. And there were lots of costumes for this movie in particular. So how did you start making that many costumes? Very early on, even while we were still in prep mode, like there were some huge set pieces that I did have to, I started tackling in any way I could without physical money. And that was the battle. In the script, it's written, there's a thousand men on the battlefield. But the great accomplishment of this film, one of the many great accomplishments is how huge it is in scale and how very little means we had. We all knew it was an art house movie. And so there was a limited budget. And so we had to work within that parameter. And so how do you dress a thousand silent movie medieval battlefield with, you know, and not blow your whole wad? I could have spent my entire budget just on that scene. I think that that in this case, the, the push actually kind of helped us a little bit. You're constantly juggling. Like, I remember my crew saying, like, I don't understand how you make 550 decisions a day. So that was another thing. It's like, I am decisive, just like Damien is. Like, if I know something's right... My, I, I, I work on instinct and I know I, I feel like if it's right and if Damien likes it, then I'm good to go. You know, being, you know, I've done this a long time, so I know what the priorities are and you start with your principles yes. and now you start with your speaking parts and those that you have access to. And some people were unavailable and, but some people were available to us very early on. For instance, Diego Calva, who I love, he was here very early on in prep and we were able to have our first fittings with him the first week that I was on. And um, we started with Margot shortly thereafter. She was starting to do dance rehearsals. So things like that were helpful to sort of like get us, you know, because we were constantly, there was never a moment where we're like, oh, that looks great. Let's have a cup of coffee. It was always like, what's next? You know, like, <laughs> and so you yes. tried to do as much as you could before we started shooting. And then a lot had to happen while we were filming and it was on the go just it was huge. It was a big, it was my biggest film and it was big. Yes. Because nothing is CGI in the film, not anything, That's not amazing. those guys on the battlefield, not anything. Yes. There's, there's one particular uh, scene in the movie that I wanted to ask you about is yes. towards the end. There's like an absolute tonal shift in the movie, like this kind of underground club. Um, yeah. What did you speak about with Damien of what he wanted for the scene and what did you put into that? You're the first person that's asked me about the blockhouse because the blockhouse, we shot that at the end. And it was always like, it, it's like the most depraved scene in the movie. And it was so dark and so um, twisted. And to be honest with you, it's not my, um, that's not my personality. You know, I'm, uh, I'm, you know, I don't know, I'm more upbeat and more positive. But the blockhouse, I had to go to a whole nother place. Like, okay, this is so sick and so twisted. It's great. And it was such a good challenge for me. And it was probably the most challenging in a weird way, because I had to go to a place that I had never gone before. And then it was just like, I was like, okay, I don't know how I just came up with that. That is so gross. But and Damien was like loving it. And we were sharing photos from the fittings and, and you don't even see half of it. Like there were oh, so many more things. Very that dark. Yes. So dark. If you dig deep, like very, Damien, you've probably heard this before. He asked all of the department heads, like fine research that's from the twenties. That doesn't look like the twenties. And then, which is what we did. And that's how we came up with the entire look of the film was based on this challenge that we just accumulated thousands and thousands of photos. And then, to find for the blockhouse, it was the same thing. Um, we would print them and we had so many photographs that we would make mood boards for each of the scenes. And honestly, the scenes sometimes had 50 to 100 mood boards that we would just plaster the walls and the fitting rooms with. You know, we needed, we couldn't, you know, it's not like you can rent these things. And so we were just exactly. churning things out. That's the other way I made this movie happen is that I had such an incredible crew. I'd come up with an idea and they'd just like be like, here, you know, we could just make them out of rudimentary cheap materials that you would have had in the 20s, you know, like a paper mache. We just kind of made things in a 
in the way that they would have made them in the 20s. 